adjustable and a fully adjustable articulator. This is semi adjustable because only a portion of the condyle is going to be adjusted. Hello everyone. Welcome to Prosso Lecture in Complete Denture Series. Today we will be discussing on the topic articulators. We will first be looking at the definition and try to understand it. We will study the purpose of it. Its uses. We will be looking into the requirements of it. Then we will be discussing its advantages and its shortcomings. And finally we'll broadly classify the articulators and look into each category. Let's start with the definition. Articulator is defined as a mechanical device which represents the temporomandibular joints and the jaw members to which maxillary and mandibular casts may be attached to simulate jaw movements. An articulator simulates the jaw movements made by the mandible in relation to the maxilla. When the casts are mounted in the articulator, it is very easy to arrange the teeth on the occlusal rims and check for occlusion. The rims can be transferred to the instrument, which will resemble and perform the functions of the maxilla, mandible and TMJ. Let's move on to the purpose of the articulator. There are three main purposes of this device. They are, 1. To hold the maxillary and mandibular casts in a determined fixed relationship. 2. To simulate the jaw movements, like opening and closing. 3. To produce border movements and intra-border movements of the teeth similar to those in the mouth. This will ensure fabrication of prosthesis with minimum errors. Let's move on to the uses of it. Uses are as follows. 1. To diagnose the state of occlusion in both the natural and artificial dentitions. 2. To plan dental procedures based on the relationship between opposing natural and artificial teeth. 3. To aid in the fabrication of restorations and prosthodontic replacements. 4. To correct and modify completed restorations. 5. To arrange artificial teeth. Let's look into requirements of the articulator. The requirements can be classified as basic slash minimum requirements and additional requirements. 1. It should hold casts in the correct horizontal relationship. 2. It should hold casts in the correct vertical relationship. 3. The casts should be easily removable and reattachable. 4. It should provide a positive anterior vertical stop, incisal pin. 5. It should accept face bow transfer record using an anterior reference point. 6. It should open and close in a hinge movement. 7. It should be made of non-corrosive and rigid materials to hat resist wear and tear. 8. It should not be bulky or heavy. 9. There should be adequate space present between the upper and lower members. 10. The moving parts should move freely without any friction. So these are some of the basic requirements. Now let's talk about some of the additional requirements 1. The condylar guides should allow protrusive and lateral jaw motion. 2. The condylar guides should be adjustable in a horizontal direction. 3. The articulator should be adjustable to accept and alter the Bennett movement. 4. The incisal guide table should be customizable. Now let's talk about the advantages and limitations of an articulator. 1. Helps to visualize the patient's occlusion, especially from the lingual view. 2. Patient cooperation is not a factor when using an articulator once the appropriate interocclusal records are obtained from the patient. 3. The patient's saliva, tongue and cheeks are not factors when using an articulator. 4. Reduced chair time, patient's appointment time. 5. Helps in the refinement of complete denture occlusion.
Some of the disadvantages are 1. Manufacturing errors or errors resulting from metal fatigue. 2. The articulator may not exactly simulate the intraborder and functional movements of the mandible. 3. Errors in jaw relation procedures are reproduced as errors in the denture occlusion. Articulators do not have any provision to indicate or correct these errors. Moving on to the final part, let's try and understand the major classifications of articulators. 1. Based on adjustability. 2. Based on theories of occlusion. 3. Based on the ability to simulate TMJ. So now, let's try to understand the classification of articulators. Now in front of me, I have three different types of articulators, each for one classification. We will try to understand what, what is the difference between all these three types and how do we use each one of them. Okay. So now to begin with, if we have to classify articulators based on the adjustability, we will be classifying them as non-adjustable, semi-adjustable and fully adjustable articulators. So this basically non-adjustable basically means that you cannot adjust anything. It is just open and close. Not even the lateral movements are possible. It is just going to be open and close. So this is an example of a non-adjustable articulator. This is a hinge articulator and the most commonly used one which is the mean value articulator is also a non-adjustable articulator. You can just open and close the articulator and no other movements, no other condylar adjustments are possible with this articulator. Now this is another articulator which is called as a semi-adjustable articulator or a Hanau wide view articulator. Why is this called semi-adjustable? Because here that you're seeing here, this portion is the condylar element and you can adjust this condylar element according to the patient's requirements or according to the patient's values. So that is why this is a semi-adjustable articulator. Now we will, as we go on, we will differentiate between the semi-adjustable and the fully adjustable articulator. This is semi-adjustable because only a portion of the condyle is going to be adjusted with that of the TMJ and in a fully adjustable articulator, the condylar element can be adjusted in all three dimensions. So if articulators are classified based on adjustability, we will have a non-adjustable, semi-adjustable and I don't have for a fully adjustable. Classification of articulators based on theories of occlusion were given by three people and their own concepts. So one is Bonville, second is conical theory or proposed by Hall and the third is the spherical theory proposed by Monson. So Bonville's uh, plane of occlusion or Bonville's equilateral triangle theory suggests that the intercondylar distance that is the two condyles are the posterior determinants and the central point of the mandibular incisors correspond to an equilateral triangle that is the posterior determinants and the anterior determinants together form an equilateral triangle of 4 inches at its sides. So the mean value articulator is constructed on Bonville's theory. I will repeat again the condyles, the intercondylar distance and the distance between the condyle and the mandibular central incisors, the middle portion correspond to an equilateral triangle of 4 inches in length. So this is Bonville's theory. Second is spherical theory given by Monsoon. So Monsoon said that the incising and the occlusal surfaces of the mandibular posteriors or the mandibular teeth conform to a sphere of 8 inches in diameter with its center at the glabella. His theory has been incorporated in his own articulator, so which is that is the spherical articulator or Monsoon's articulator. And the third theory is the conical theory of articulators which was given by Hall. Hall proposed that the central incisors or the incising surface and the occlusal surface of the mandibular teeth correspond to a cone which is tilted at an angle of 45 degrees with the occlusal plane. So that is the central axis of the cone and the occlusal plane will form an angle of 
45 degrees with each other and his theory has been incorporated into his own articulator which is the Hall articulator. So this is the classification of articulators based on theories of occlusion. Now coming to the third and the most important classification of all of them which is based on the ability to simulate the temporomandibular joint. So based upon the ability to simulate the TMJ we can classify articulators into four types starting from class 1 which is going to simulate TMJ the least possible amount, class 2, class 3 and class 4 which will simulate TMJ in all three dimensions. So class 4 is going to be having the highest simulation of TMJ and class 1 will be having the least simulation of TMJ. So what we are seeing over here is a, an example for a class 1 articulator which is called as a mechanical device which is able to record a simple single static registration record. So you can remember S cube. S cube is the simplest way of remembering class 1 articulators because this equipment or this device is very simple. simple. It can just take one record. That means you can record and use this articulator only for one patient at a time. And this record is static. That is, you can just open and close in one direction. That is the vertical direction. So the example of this articulator, I mean this type is a hinge articulator. Another example is a slab articulator. A slab articulator will be having a slab made up of plaster of Paris instead of a hinge like this at the behind holding the cast. So this is an example for a class 1 articulator. Now let's continue with the second classification. Now class 2 as it represents, class 2 is equal to horizontal plus vertical. So that is how we are going to remember class 2 articulators are going to produce both horizontal and vertical movements. But these movements are not in accordance with the TMJ. I am repeating again. Class 2 articulators will produce both horizontal and vertical movements but these movements are not in accordance with the TMJ of the patient. So what you are seeing here, the mean value articulator is a classic example for a class 2 articulator where one is the vertical movement and the other is the horizontal movement that is possible to a very limited extent though and this movement that you are seeing is not at all in accordance with the TMJ of the patient. Okay, So this is a class 2 articulator and as we discuss class 2 uh, articulators are further classified into three different types class 2A, class 2B and class 2C. So class 2A articulators are based on certain mean values. So the mean value are for the classic example is going to be again a mean value articulator and the mean values in a mean value articulator are first the intercondylar distance this intercondylar distance is fixed at 110 millimeters that is one condyle to another is 110 millimeters that is the first mean value or the average value the second average value is that the portion that you are seeing over here this is the condylar shaft which is having a spring. If you have an articulator, you can play with it. You will be finding a spring inside this and this angle, this condylar shaft angle is fixed at 30 degrees. And the third average value is the value of the incisal guide table. I'll open and show it to you like this. So this incisal guide table is fixed at an angle of 5 degrees all over that means the sloping angle that you see over here is fixed at an angle of 5 degrees. So these are the three important average values in a mean value articulator. So this is a class 2A articulator. The class 2B articulators are based on theories of occlusion as we have seen before what are the theories and the theories where the, the articulators based upon those theories are the examples for class 2B articulators. Now class 2C articulators are based on certain engraving records obtained from the patient. We regularly do not, these are the theoretical importance and we do not use or have any articulators based on class 2C. Now coming to the third classification. Now class 3 articulators can accept a 
horizontal that is a horizontal movement is possible as you can see over here and this horizontal movement is more pronounced as compared to a class 2 articulator it was very difficult and very limited in a class 2 articulator but here you can see how smoothly this articulator is producing the horizontal movements and of course we will be having a vertical movement vertical movement in this articulator and what you're seeing over here is the condylar element this is all adjustable and this adjustableness and this adjustability is going to simulate the tmj to some very close extent it is not going to fully simulate the tmj because a tmj will be having a three dimensional adjustment but in this you can adjust the tmj in almost two dimensions so this is close enough to the tmj but it is not exactly there so that means it is going to allow a horizontal movement it is going to allow for a vertical movement and it is going to simulate some amount of the tmj so that is why this is called as a class 3 articulator and what you're seeing here is a semi adjustable articulator so class 3 articulators are also called as semi adjustable articulators and these articulators are going to simulate the TMJ based on some mechanical equivalence obtained for some or all parts of the condyle. Now we don't need to get into the details of what protrusive record, what is lateral record, how are we going to adjust those things. So it is just easy to remember class 3 articulators are semi adjustable articulators. They have a condylar element that can be adjusted according to the patient's values and it is going to simulate almost the TMJ of the patient. So one more important thing that has to be remembered is a class 3 articulator can accept a face bow record. We will discuss what is face bow in the coming topics, coming lectures, but a face bow can be attached only to a class 3 or a class 4 articulator and it cannot be attached to a class 2 or a class 1 articulator. Okay. So then this is again classified into class 3A and class 3B. We don't have to get into the details. You just need to know that class 3 articulators and how they are going to replicate the TMJ. So coming to the last classification, which is a class 4 articulator. A class 4 articulator is going to simulate the TMJ in all three dimensions, in the horizontal, in the vertical, and in the frontal plane, it is going to simulate the TMJ. So that is why it is called as a fully adjustable articulator. You can adjust the condylar position according to the exact position of the condyle in the patient. So that is why it is called as a fully adjustable articulator. The example of a fully adjustable or a classic class 4 articulator is a TMJ articulator. Again, this classification has two types, class 4A and class 4B. So this class 4A is based on stereographic records obtained from the patient and class 4B is based on pantographic records obtained from the patient. We don't have to get into any more details of this. This is enough. And uh, so class 4 articulators are also called as the fully adjustable articulators. And yes, they will be taking a, they will be accepting a Facebook record from the patient.